students in this video we're going to study about naming organic compounds so scientists found that organic compounds are huge i mean there are many millions and millions and millions of compounds and so they thought we need the system to name these compounds we can't just have a random name for each chemical right i mean that that would be really really difficult and so they decided that they're gonna have a system and so each compound will have a name and of course one name that has a system and the first part of its name will depend on the number of carbon atoms and so this is the first part and so if the compound had only one carbon atom that then the name of the compound will start with the phrase meth or with the prefix meth and if there's two carbons then it will start with f so F something, and then if there's three carbons, it will start with prop. If it's four carbons, it will start with but. If it's five carbons, it will start with pent. And pent is easy to remember because you know that pentagon is a shape with five sides. And so five carbons starts with pent. Six carbons starts with hex. It's, it starts to become easier because hex, you know, like hexagon is six sides. And then heptagon is, is seven sides. So seven carbons is hept. 8 carbons is oct, 9 carbons is known, and 10 carbons is dec. And so this is the first part. Again, it depends on the number of carbons, so it becomes easy. Now, sometimes um, there's two compounds, and they're both, they both have two carbons. However, they have different chemical structure. They're not the same. And so that last part of the chemical name will depend on some features of this organic compound, and these features features we call them functional group and I'll tell you in a minute what's functional group functional group is basically a group of atoms that makes the chemical very unique very special and so for example many compounds have a group of atoms which is o, o single bond H and so scientists decided that all these group of compounds that have OH in them they're gonna call them alcohols and they also decided that the name of the, those compounds will all end in O and so the ending depends on the functional group and so OH here is the functional group. A lot of compounds also have this group COOH and so scientists decided to, to call all this family of compounds carboxylic acids and these carboxylic acids they decided to name the compounds oic acid and so they end in the word oic acid. Now a lot of compounds also have carbon carbon double bond and so they decided to call those alkenes and alkenes all alkenes will end in in and then anything that doesn't have any of the other functional group and it's just basically all single bonds are called alkanes and alkanes end in in and so for example if it's one carbon and and it's an alkane it's all single bond it will be called methane if it's two carbon carbons and it's um and it's an alkane it will be called ethane and so on and uh, again i'll just give you an example here if it's one carbon and it's an alkane it will be called methane ethane propane butane and so on if it if it has double bond it will call be it will be called pentene hexene heptene octene and so on if it has an alcohol if it has an oh group it will be called octanol nonanol decanol and so on and so the first part depends on the number of carbon atoms the last part depends on the functional group now what about the middle part sometimes you will have a middle part sometimes you will not have a middle part and the middle part depends on the position of the functional group and so i'll give you an example if we have butene butene but means four carbons and so we have four carbons over here in means that there's a double bond and so there's a double bond over here now the double bond could be at the first carbon or it could be 
at the second carbon. And so in this case, we're going to have to differentiate. We cannot just call it butene. We have to be specific. Is, the, is it the butene with the double bond at the first carbon? Or is it the butene with the double bond in the second carbon? And so the first one will be called but1ene. The second one will be called but2ene. And so this middle part is numerical. It's just a number. And this number tells me where is the functional group? Is it at the first carbon? Is it at the second carbon? Is it at the third carbon? And so on. And so right now what we're going to do is we're going to study each of these functional groups. We're going to study the alkanes the alkenes, the alcohols, and the carboxylic acids. And then we're going to have separate videos for each of these families to explain their reactions. And so, for example, alkanes, they all undergo very, very similar reactions. And we're going to study those three reactions. Alkenes also undergo specific reactions. We're going to study them. Same thing with alcohols and carboxylic acids. So for now, what we're going to do is study the names of these compounds, their structure, formula and something called general formula which I will explain here in a second and so let's start with this first family of compounds it's called alkanes and alkanes their functional group or something that makes it very special is that they don't have any double bond it's all C single bond C and they all have the a same general formula which is CnH2n plus 2 and this basically means that any compound, the number of hydrogen atoms in this compound will not only be double the number of carbons, but it will be double plus two. And I'll give you an example right now. And so, for example, alkanes, the first alkane in this family is called methane, which has one carbon atom. And so for one carbon atom, it's methane and it has one carbon. So just C1, which we don't Put anyone and then how many hydrogens again the number of hydrogens is twice the number of carbon plus two and so the number of carbons he's here is one and so one times two plus two is actually four and so the formula of methane I'm gonna take this off is simply CH4 and so this is the molecular formula and this is the name of the compounds lastly we want to know the structural formula and the structural formula shows all the bondings of a compound. And so here I have a carbon that's covalently bonded to four hydrogen atoms. Now we have studied in chapter three that carbon has four valence electrons. It has four electrons in the outer shell. And so it wants to share those four electrons with someone else so that it has eight electrons in the outer shell. And what it does is it shares with four other elements in this case, for other hydrogens. The second member of this family is called ethane because it has two carbons and so it will be C2H something. Now how many H's are there? It's two times two plus two so four plus two which is six. So this is the molecular formula of ethane. Now what about the structural formula? Simply you're gonna first start with carbons and so it's carbon single bond carbon because it's an ane and alkane so there's no double bond it's all single bond and then now we're gonna put out those hydrogens and so this first carbon i'm going to draw it in a different color for example black this first carbon already has one bond and carbon can have four or requires to have four bonds and so we already have one and so we need to draw two three and four so that we have four total covalent bonds because you know carbon has a valency of four and so it needs four bonds and so that's why we have hydrogens over here. Now the second carbon which I will draw in green already has this one bond so this is number one it needs another uh, three other bonds to three and four and so here are the hydrogens and so that's how I can draw the structural formula of ethane. Now if you count the number of hydrogens it's gonna be six hydrogen atoms and that's how I make sure that my molecular formula is correct. We can either draw the structure and count the hydrogens or we can follow this general formula which is CnH2n plus 2 to figure out the number of hydrogens. Now this would be easy for small compounds however what if the compound is really really you know really large you know for example um c20 what would the h be now if it's c20 i don't want you to draw like 
20 carbon atoms and then figure out the number of hydrogens and keep counting them oh my god that's too much all right you're not gonna do that right on exam what you need to do is figure out the number of hydrogens so the formula says cn h2n plus 2 and so the number of hydrogens here is going to be 2 times 20 the n is 20 plus 2 and so that's 40 plus 2 and so that is 42 and so the, your formula is c20h42 now let's go to the third member of this alkanes family the third member is has to start with the word prop because it's three carbons and should end with ain because it's just an alkane and it has all single bonds and so, and so it's called propane and the formula is c3h8 how did i know it's c3h8 2 times 3 plus 2 is is eight now what about the structural formula it's three carbons three carbon atoms and now we have to put those hydrogens again there's this one bond and so i have to put three more for the carbon in the middle there's two bonds and so i need to put two more because i need a total of four and for the third carbon i already have one bond and so i need three more and so all of these will be the hydrogens if you count them they're going to be eight hydrogen atoms now same thing with the fourth one which is butane it's called butane because it has four carbons the molecular formula would be c 4H10 because the number of hydrogens is twice the carbon so that's 8 plus 2 8 plus 2 is 10 now the structural formula is going to be four carbons and then we need to put the hydrogens so the first one will need three hydrogens because it's already got one bond the second one already has two bonds and so we need to put two hydrogens third one same thing needs two hydrogens and the last one needs three hydrogens if you count the hydrogens they're going to be 10 now i want you to notice something the difference between the first one and the second one is just one carbon of course and the number of hydrogens that's different between the first and the second is two hydrogens the first one has four the second one has six now the difference between the second member and the third member is one carbon and six this has six and this has eight so the difference is two hydrogens the difference between the third and the fourth is also one carbon and two hydrogens and so the difference between two consecutive consecutive members of the same family will always be CH2. This is something I want you to remember because in the next video, I'm going to explain something called homologous series. And homologous series just describes each family. So this whole family, alkanes, alkanes forms a, a homologous series in which all the members have very similar things, six, specifically six similar things that we will study in the next video. And so for alkanes, you you generally need to know the following things you need to know the general formula which is cnh 2 n plus 2 you need to know the functional group which is simply single bonds you need to know the name of the compound the molecular formula of the compound and the structural formula of the compound now let's